domes. For centuries, they've been inspiring artists around the world. The Taj Mahal in India, the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, and Florence's great Renaissance Basilica. And today, we can add to that list a great big white tent on the River Thames. Symbolically designed around the concept of time, Greenwich's Millennium Dome is 365 metres across, 52 metres high, and has 12 very pointy steel masts. The concept of time couldn't be more important to the three artists who will be painting today. They have just four hours to complete their last masterpiece of the competition. It's time for the final of Landscape Artist of the Year. Thousands of hopefuls applied, but just 36 gifted artists were selected to take part in this year's competition. Hopefully I can pull it out the bag. <laughs> Taking inspiration from some of the UK's most spectacular and enchanting scenery, they were challenged to create their own individual landscape masterpieces. What are the challenges of painting outside? My hair getting in my way. <laughs> Along the way, three artists outshone the rest. Ophelia Redpath. Claire Lord. <laughs> Sheila Caseborn. Feeling completely stunned. What just happened there? I have no idea. Slightly gobsmacked about having won through to the final. I am so thrilled. I'm still kind of pinching myself. I just can't quite believe it. These three artists now face one last contest. I mean, it is the final. Are you more nervous today? I think I'm as panic-stricken as I have been every other stage, okay. really. I'm wondering if you've sort of been developing a four-hour style. I seriously think I have. There's about an eighth of the canvas totally bald. I'm still not sure what I'm going to put in that. Oh my goodness, you don't know. Our finalists are one landscape away from a sensational prize, a £10,000 commission to paint the stunning vistas of Snowdonia, creating an artwork to celebrate the anniversary of the National Trust's first ever land donation. But it's not just today's paintings subject to scrutiny. There are also the commissions, landscapes our artists have completed in their own time. It would be nice to try and include something which had symbolic purpose. Dragons and lions bring them on. To be crowned winner, they'll need to impress our three judges, Kathleen Soriano, Kate Bryan, and Ty Shan Scherenberg. All you're thinking yeah. about is? Colour and tone and negative spaces. Like some Zen master, I yeah. love it. <laughs> so who will take the ultimate artistic accolade and triumph? This year's Landscape Artist of the Year is In London's Docklands, today three artists face their final challenge. Competing are two professionals, Claire Lord and Ophelia Redpath. If I did win, I would just be amazed and delighted. Even just the fact I'm in the final is just extraordinary. For me, actually being in the final is quite life-changing in terms of my practice as an artist. Painting alongside them is one amateur artist, Sheila Caseborn. Having got this far, it does seem like it's within touching distance. I'm feeling quite competitive, I won't lie. Well, it's all a bit overwhelming, isn't it, really? It's crazily detailed. So many straight lines and exact angles, and the dome. You hope that something's going to grab you. Yes, yes absolutely. And I'm waiting for that to happen. We've got three fabulous finalists, each approaching painting in a completely different way. We're putting them in front of this crazy landscape, and I want to see their version of it. The view of that crazy landscape is from Trinity Boy Wharf on the banks of the Thames, the historic home of the engineers who for centuries kept the water safe for river goers. But our artist's route to victory today is fraught with difficulty as they navigate the view towards the sleek skyline of Canary Wharf and the Millennium Dome, one of the capital's most iconic and unusual landmarks. The view today is really fun, but it's a challenge. 
It's a lot of sky. It's very panoramic. And I think the biggest challenge is what to choose. You know, they have to be great editors. They have to make a really intelligent compositional choice. The decisions they make in the first hour of the day are going to basically decide whether or not they win. This is the final. We had to make it hard. The dome is literally directly in front of us. I think it's wonderful. I think it's also very difficult. Because it's so huge, I don't know how we get the sense of scale. 90% sure I'm going to go that way towards the boat with the turquoise and orange on the back. It's about choosing what appeals to me most from this position. And, uh, and oh, I don't believe it. The thing that I've chosen has just sailed off. <laughs> Today's view is growing on me. When I first saw it, it was just huge and the Millennium Dome right in front of us. But, you know, I don't have to paint what's right in front of me, do I? So <laughs> I shall rebel. Artists, congratulations to you all on having got this far in the competition. Now you have just one final four-hour challenge ahead before one of you wins the £10,000 commission. As it's the final, the judges will be expecting some truly outstanding work, so we hope you're ready to set the Thames on fire. Not literally, of course. Please do be careful with the white spirit. <laughs> Good luck to each of you. Your time starts now. Thank you. Well, I had a look around again, but then I've come back to this because I think the reason I chose it wasn't just about the boat. The thing that I've noticed is this rope and then the wall and then the wire and then the white. And there's this little yellow square on the side of the building. It's almost like, bing, exactly the same color as the rope. So it's the tiniest focal point that I've ever had in a painting. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. Claire Lord is a professional artist from Stafford. At her heat in West Wickham Park, it was her combination of dynamic up-close composition and colour on large-scale canvas that enthralled the judges. She's raised this inconsequential section of the house into this sort of monolithic being almost. It is really beautifully done. In the semi-final at London's Olympic Park, Claire dared to go even bigger, earning herself a podium finish. Claire's really good on structure and composition. You know, she goes right in there and finds those bold forms and that rich colour. Claire, I'm supposed to come and talk to you, but I'd rather watch you paint. <laughs> the way that paint is going on, it's very yummy. Uh, goes on nicely. I love drawing, which is, is helpful, because I, I just that think... That is helpful <laughs> <laughs> for picture-making. Uh, yeah. Now, from your submission onwards, your work is I very think. much about structure and yeah. sort of creating barriers in a funny way across the picture plane. As you're putting in the whole of the city there, the banking centre, you don't think of that at all. Yeah. All you're thinking yeah. about is? Colour and tone and shape and negative spaces. You're looking at the sky in between yeah. all the time. Oh, you painter, you. <laughs> like some yeah. Zen master. I yeah. love it. <laughs> As Claire explores the complexities of her composition... Oh, oh, that's brilliant. One of our other artists is exploring in a more literal sense. At the moment, I'm just going round taking some snaps. There's some really lovely old boats down here that I hadn't seen before. Obviously, the main view is important, but I'm interested in all these other aspects that are dotted around the place. So I'm thinking of doing a composite picture where a few things are juxtaposed against each other. Professional artist Ophelia Redpath hails from Royston, near Cambridge. She first impressed the judges, winning her heat with a surrealist rendering of the West Reservoir in North London. It's sort of fantastical, but in a way that could be possible. And I think that's what I like about it. At the semi-final, Ophelia's unique visual language saw her triumph once again at the Olympic Park. Ophelia is just one of the most distinctive artists we've ever had because she paints in quite an academic way, and yet it's totally magical. She's a great storyteller. Ophelia, you're beginning to draw your design. What selections are you making now? 
Obviously, the dome has to be the main player in this. I'm going to kind of scan the skyline to see which buildings want to accompany it onto this. It's like a stage set almost. What I'm looking for is bright colours, because there are so many around. There's some splashes of yellow on the dome. Yes. Does that appeal? It does appeal. Do you think you have the artistic freedom to put colour where there is no colour? It might be a bit cheeky to do that, but all artists are cheeky in some form or other. I might do it pink. <laughs> <laughs> this is an absolutely crucial stage. I've got to get the composition clear in my head, because otherwise I'll be lost before I start. I might go to a bigger board, I'm not sure. We're going to be on our three and I won't start it. <laughs> Former publisher Sheila Caseborn is the only amateur artist to reach the final. A seasoned plein air painter, she won her heat with a striking portrayal of Chartwell House in Kent. There's so much strength to her work because she makes great compositional choices before she even gets down to the business of good looking paint. At the Olympic Park, Sheila's atmospheric painting in her signature impressionistic style saw her across the finish line and into the final. Sheila brings us a sort of really chalky, romantic, very highly aestheticised view of the landscape. It could be completely timeless as well. Sheila, the challenge started some time ago. It's a long time now. What have you been doing? I don't feel like I've done anything, really. It doesn't look like you've done anything. I know. <laughs> don't I mean, you have an easel. <laughs> you have... I have a palette, an easel. I think I've sorted out my composition. Right. Are you painting the dome? I'm not painting the dome. Why not? It doesn't inspire me, I'm afraid. I think what inspires me being here is the history of the river. So you're just going to ignore that big I am thing. ignoring that huge thing that's right in front of us. And you're going to look and east. And I'm going to think about all the boats that have come round that corner and the sweep of the old walls naturally leads your eye. Right. The sky is quite dramatic today, so... It's getting more dramatic by the minute. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it is the final. Are you more nervous today? Are you more anxious? Or are you taking it all in I your stride? I think I'm... I think I'm as panic-stricken as I have been every other stage, okay. really. So, oh, well, it's worked yeah. well so far. So just go Bring with on the, the flow. panic. Yeah. <laughs> They've all chosen completely different views. We have plonked this monstrosity in front of them, and I can see why they're trying to avoid it. But I thought with the yellow structures that they would really go to town. Ophelia's the only one tackling this, isn't she? But, I mean, if you're going to look for a surreal landscape, you've only got to look as far as that tent across the river. But interesting that we've got Sheila, who gives us distance, Claire, who brings us right up close, and then we've got Ophelia, yeah, who takes us to another planet, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, perfect set of artists <laughs> for the final. <laughs> With an hour of the challenge already gone, the artists are grappling with the consequences of their wildly different takes on the scene in front of them. Lots of things could go wrong. I could lose the plot as far as getting the composition is concerned. So I want to try and remember what I was initially thinking. This composition is a significantly risky, probably impossible task, but uh, I'm going to give it a go. I'm starting to like it already. I'm pretty behind, I think. I've still got an awful lot to do. I don't want to look at my colleagues. When you see other people's work, it sort of freaks you out a bit. At Trinity Boy Wharf in London's Docklands, our artists are entering the second hour of their four-hour challenge to depict the view across the Thames and are doing all they can to keep their heads above water. I am a little bit worried that it's all a little bit monotone, but do you know, I've got a lot of sky and a lot of river. It will become colour-wise a bit more interesting. Just on the sky, and that's always the easiest bit because clouds can do what they want and no one will know whether I got the clouds right or not. What I found really interesting was the, the views through these different barriers. But that does mean that not only have you got to paint the barriers, but you've got to paint the sort of broken reality that's behind it as well. I think I may be a little crazy. 
Ty, there's a lot to look at from here. I mean, there's a, there's a yes. huge amount of scope. There's a sort of 180-degree field of vision for them. Yes. Initially, I would look at this and think, this, it's just too complicated. You know, you've got this huge expanse of muddy river. Everything is in high detail. So it really is up to the artist to find and edit a bit out of this chaos. So are you looking then for an artist today to paint something and for you to go, ah, why didn't I see that? That's exactly what I'm thinking. I mean, you want an artist to put a lens on the reality that gives you a new insight. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless if they're going to just knock out a building with 150 floors of windows. It doesn't show me art. I want somebody who changes this. So I get a new insight, absolutely. But it is complicated. There's n nothing here I would want to paint. Oh, right, OK, I just good. thought, I just got to put it out there. I look across this and I despair. <laughs> Thankfully, today's finalists are made of sterner stuff. And working in her surreal, illustrative style, Ophelia's composite scene is already coming together. Ophelia, you've given us this very sort of malevolent, egg-like form. <laughs> I feel like it's going to give birth to some monstrosity <laughs> later on today. Are you already thinking about that magic realist element that you're going to put in, or do you... Does um, that sort of come later I on? I think it'll probably come later on. I think I'm just kind of getting structures down. I've actually had a little tour around with my phone. Just over there, there's these lovely kind of old warehouse granary type buildings. There's a lot of modern in front of us, and I wanted to juxtapose the old with the, the modern. And what about colour? Are we going to see that introduced? Because I can see yep. you've already started to draw in this yellow boat that's really going to pop. Is yes. it going to be yellow when it it's comes It's going in? to be bright yellow, yes. It's, it's lovely, and I don't want it to move, so whoever owns the boat, I want them to keep the boat there. <laughs> Claire, what an interesting slice you have chosen. It's a painting you fight your way into yes. for you to paint, but actually for us to view it, because, you know, one would say actually the star of this is the Canary Wharf skyline, but it's actually really buried beneath lots of other activity. Yeah. You're using this absolutely gorgeous symphony of blues and purples. Are you going to stay within this monochrome range of blue? Uh, no, because I've actually just got ah, a dash of red. But I, I quite like having a, a colour that sort of resounds underneath, so the yeah. sketch being in one colour, it sort of echoes through the other colours. Is there any part of this painting you're particularly worried about, or are you, are you pretty relaxed? I'm not relaxed. <laughs> it's all hard, to be honest. In contrast to Claire's complex modern landscape, the beginnings of Sheila's impressionistic painting evoke a different time and place entirely. Sheila, if I came across this in the Gare d'Orsay in Paris, I thought, what a nice early Monet or a Sisley. What is extraordinary is very few colours, but you've been able to create this incredible space and sense of place. Your sky is very lively, but also it's got that underpainting which adds to it. Is it, is it difficult to paint onto that, or is it quite fun to have no, the...? it's great. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> now, you've quite judiciously avoided this monstrosity. Yes. Or anything particularly modern. We have got this structure. That I'm is pretty true. Matting. Now, as I squint here, the river is tonally, it's the highest thing in the painting. It's very light, isn't it? It is very light. It's rather lovely, actually. It's a bit like a sheet of metal, isn't it, today? You haven't put it in. Well, I wanted to start with the sky. The river is obviously reflecting the sky yeah. lighter, but I think it's important to get that in first because whatever reflections I do manage to get are coming from that. Anyway, it looks beautiful. I can't wait to see this in its later stages. OK. Though the majority of the view facing our three finalists today is distinctly modern, Trinity Boy Wharf itself has a rich history. In the early 1800s, the corporation of Trinity House, a guild dating back to Tudor times, purchased the land and moorings here. For almost the next 200 years, it was used as a light ship dock and maintenance facility for the boys deployed in the Thames and coastal waters of the southeast to keep shipping lanes navigable. Trinity Boy Wharf is also home to London's only lighthouse. Dating from the 1860s, it was built for the testing of new types of lamps, and the pioneering scientist who undertook much of this work, Michael Faraday, had his workshop in a building here. In its early 1900s heyday, around 150 men were employed at the wharf, but over the next century, its fortunes waned as London's lack of deep water mooring saw the shipping industry move elsewhere. 
30 years since it closed, the wharf is flourishing. Repurposed shipping containers form the UK's first container city. And the lighthouse is now home to Long Player, a musical installation comprising 234 singing bowls, the vibrations of which create notes. It's designed to play continuously without repeat for a thousand years before starting all over again. In the shadow of the lighthouse, with half of the four-hour challenge now up, our artists are wishing their time limit was as generous. There's a lot of canvas that I haven't covered. This is a kind of problem of mine that I get very obsessed with particular details and then suddenly I realise there's a whole load of stuff that I haven't done. What we need to do is focus on the building. So we've got a big clump of buildings here and the gondola structure, which is quite dominant in the painting, so I need to paint it in. It's going to be tough. Claire, I can feel the stress coming yes. off you. I've got 40 million hours left to do and probably about two hours left to do it in. Yeah. Crazy girl. <laughs> At Trinity Boy Wharf on the River Thames, our three finalists, Sheila, Ophelia and Claire, are approaching the halfway stage of their final challenge. Competing to be crowned Landscape Artist of the Year, along with winning a prestigious commission, it's full steam ahead. I've just seen a little tugboat, so I'm just trying to put it in while it's there. I need to stop in a minute and step back and see where I am, because I'm getting a little bit muddy. The dome so far has been the easiest because I've only done the curve of it. I'm just hoping I'm going to get the time to, to complete it. At the moment, I'm feeling rushed off my feet. It's the question of things drying in time. The jury's out at the moment as to whether I'm going to go in with a bit more colour. Colours are like a family on the painting. Once they get going with each other, they've got a sort of secret language that it's the artist's job to try and understand. Tricky stuff. We used to artists painting what they damn well like, <laughs> but today we have three artists all painting in entirely different directions. Sheila exudes calmness, doesn't she? I mean... The works feel calm. This muted colour palette is beautiful and this, this sense of distance. I mean, she is just fantastic at dealing with air and space. A lot of it feels like it's very distant. And I remember this at the Olympic Park. I was really worried that there was nothing there in a way. And it's only towards the end of the day that the constructions start to come into play. So I'm very seduced by what I'm looking at, but an awful lot might change. So I'm quite nervous about that. We've seen from Ophelia a lot of magic realism. Mm -hmm. Is there magic there today? I thought Ophelia is always a balance between the man-made and the natural. And what she's got at the moment, it feels weirdly sort of sci-fi from the 60s, mm. but it's Ophelia's work and it, it sits together very beautifully. Her composition is very clever. I mean, it's Ty saying sci-fi from the 60s. For me, it feels like James Bond. Yeah. You know, there's <laughs> like the speedboat, these fantastic yeah. buildings in yeah. the background. There's like a criminal's lair. I think it needs a little white cat, though. Well, <laughs> we've had an owl, a heron, a dog. So we're due a cat? We are due a cat. <laughs> Claire is anxious. She feels she may have bitten off more than she can chew. I love the fact that she's taken us right into something really close, but within a second, I am inside the broken down elements of that picture. I'm mm. looking at bands of colour mm. in abstract form, yeah. the way the brush stroke sits on the canvas, the wateriness of the paint. She never goes for an easy composition, does she? I mean, she does really set herself a challenge, and not least because actually she's decided to treat it with its realistic colour palette. When it was a monochromatic blue sketch, it was very beautiful. My concern actually sits with, with this colour. Can she create something which is harmonious and complete? So, halfway through the final, got a front runner? I think I've got three front runners at the minute. <laughs> Along with today's pieces, our finalists will be judged on their commissions, landscapes they've created in their own time, away from the pressure of the pots. Commissions are always make or break, and I love them because they give us an insight into the artist, who they are when we're not around, what they do with a little bit more time. And we've got three very different artists, so we're going to have three really different looking commissions. The finalists spent the day at the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew in southwest London. 
Founded in 1840 and stretching across 300 acres, this green oasis is home to over 50,000 plants, including rare species from all over the world. Each artist was asked to paint a different area, with Sheila allocated the historic Victorian palm house. Wow, that really has got a dramatic structure. The first of its kind in the world, the palm house is packed with tropical vegetation, recreating a rainforest in miniature. It's amazing. It's just so lush and green, and the whole atmosphere is just fantastic, and I want to stay here all day. <laughs> Ophelia was sent to explore the Japanese gardens. A tranquil spot for reflection, they were designed to symbolise fundamental elements of the natural world. This area is absolutely lovely. It's got all these lovely little grey rocks which have been beautifully arranged. There's lots of dark greens and beautiful light electric green. I'm kind of slightly familiar with looking at scenes like this, but I actually haven't painted any. Claire was assigned Kew's Lake and the woodland that fringes its shore. Oh, wow. Look at that bridge. Love the reflections. The potential is fantastic. It's a really exciting setting to explore. Given free reign to choose their view, the artists each use different techniques when considering their composition. When I want to take a photograph of something, it's an indication to me, if it's appealed to me. I've taken loads of pictures of this staircase, so that could be a sign. <laughs> oh, it's hot in there. <laughs> My glasses are all steamed up. <gasps> when I go out to draw at home, I'll do 20 or 30 steps and then stop and draw whatever I can see. And sometimes I end up next to a dustbin or something, but it's about trying to find the beauty in the ordinary. I've seen dragons and lions, and it would be nice to try and include something which has some symbolic purpose. So figurines, bring them on. <laughs> I'm just doing a little sketch of the end of the palm house with some rather grand trees in the background, so that if I did decide to do a painting out here, you know, I've got something to refer to other than just photographs. I've chosen this particular view because it's got pretty much the whole of the garden in it. So it's just really good to get a, a complete impression of the layout of everything. Since I've started doing this, I've got ghost pimples all over my arms because it's absolutely fabulous. Oh gosh, it makes me want to cry almost. That's why I love to paint and draw. It's that visual joy. It's a celebration of life. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> All three artists then return to their individual studios to complete their paintings. I hope that I'll be able to do something that's completely different to the heat in the semi final. That's the aim. There's a lot of things that I think I'm going to find quite tricky. There's always the temptation to make it a composite view so you can take something from behind the scene. I hope that I'll be able to reflect the, the feel of the place, because that's I think that's what art should be about. It's not just the visual, it's the emotional as well. The finished commission pieces will be shown to the judges at the end of today's challenge. Today, though, our artists have just four hours to create their artworks and their compositions are still causing quandaries. Well, Sheila, this great support, which we think is rather lovely, actually supports a lot of little cable cars. Yes. Now, what are you going to do about those? I'm leaving them till the last minute. <laughs> Might you leave them out? I don't think I can. The structure would make no sense without them. I'm a bit worried they might look like insects. Well, they do look rather well, like Well, they do, yeah, so that'll be all right. <laughs> so when you look around, do you think, Oh, I could have gone in that direction. Definitely. But you can't torture yourself like that. You've got to make a decision and stick with it. Well, you live with your decision, and it's always served you well in the past. <laughs>
Right, come on. Oh, gosh, I can hear echoes of... Come on, Claire, come on, Claire. Do you always sort of whip yourself up into a yeah. frenzy, tell yourself off as you're working? I do find that when I get completely submerged in it, I'm at the sort of <laughs> stage of the proceedings, that I do talk to myself. One of the things I really love about this style of painting is the level of undoneness. And it feels sort of very different from the work that you submitted. I'm wondering if you've sort of been developing a, a four-hour style. <laughs> I, I, I seriously think I have. Do you feel freer? It's what my grandma used to call muck or nettles. Do you know muck that phrase? Muck or nettles? Yeah, it's when muck or nettles is when you're sitting on top of a fence and there's muck on one side, she's from Yorkshire, and there's nettles on the other side. OK. So whichever way you jump, you're in trouble. <laughs> but I was... So, so, so are we in the muck or the nettles? Well, here? exactly, well, we're on the fence at the minute. OK. <laughs> Ophelia, you seem a bit stumped. Yeah, no, I got a little bit confused because I'm doing a composite about what was in the foreground and what's in the background. Right, okay. I think I've sorted it out. Okay, I see. It's a bit like if you tell an elaborate lie, you have to keep track of it. Digging, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, um, will we be seeing a animal? I'd love to put something in, but it might not be able to appear if I'm very involved in doing everything else. Mm. So I'm always interested, by the way, that you work because you don't do layer, layer, layer and get more and more complex. Yeah. It's section by section and it gets fuller it kind and fuller. Of is, yeah. So it actually yeah. was a, about an eighth of the canvas, totally bald. Yes. I'm still not sure what I'm going to put in that. Oh my goodness, you don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like less than an hour away from yes, the end of the day. Yes, there is. Oh my goodness, that's panicking me out a bit. Um, yeah. So not only have you got Completely bare canvas, but it's sort of completely uncharted territory. Yes, it is. OK, I'll leave you to fill in this lovely... The mystery uh, bit. The mystery part, <laughs> yeah. No pressure. <laughs> With that pressure building, our three finalists now have less than a quarter of the competition left to complete their landscapes. I've just realised that the wall's at the wrong angle. I'm under pressure. But the first thing I've got to do is get this drawing right, because I can't have a wall that looks like it's going downhill and round a corner. I'm doing those pesky little gondolas, but I think I might have made them a bit small, actually, so I'm going to just step back and have a look and see how they're looking compared to the real thing. I've seen a seagull, so... This is not a figment of my imagination. <laughs> it's a last minute decision. I don't know if I'll get it done on time, so I'm just going to do my best. In London's Docklands, Sheila, Claire and Ophelia's battle for artistic acclaim has entered its final stages. And there's still time for their hopes of becoming landscape artist of the year to vanish from sight. I've just noticed that there's something to the side of the big structure, uh, like a kind of crow's nest that I've only just seen. I'm feeling very stressed. Artists, this is your final countdown. You have five minutes left. Ooh. I'm slightly panic-stricken, but the bridge has worked, and uh, I just need to try and get this rope in now. I could work on this painting for another 20 hours. At the moment, what I've got left to do is the shading on the seagull and a few more details in the right-hand corner. Oh, ah. Artist, you have one minute left. I really need more time. <laughs> You are at the end of your final challenge. Please put down your brushes and step away from your easels. Well done. Well done. Oh, my God, my God, that's over. While our artists compare notes, did you hear about my boat disappearing? No. And you didn't manage to Before photograph it. Before it How annoying. For the judges, there's no time to relax. They now need to review today's landscapes, along with getting their first look at the commissions. Oh. 
Wow. Ooh. Oh, look. That is extraordinary. It's like they've been working on this for a very long time. So distinctively in their styles. I mean, yeah. it just, it makes me want to sing. Look at Sheila's gorgeous palm house. My commission was to paint the palm house inside or out. We went in and it was just so stunning. So it was really nice to just play with the textures. Sheila's got up close, yeah. which is what I was worried she wouldn't be able to give us. But she's still got the light and the space and the kind of breathing distance that we yeah. really enjoy from all of the works we've seen so far. And you can see from the palette and the way she puts paint down, it is Sheila, but it's sort of a whole new dimension I don't think she had had, but it's yeah. just fabulous. It sits nicely with today yeah. because today you've got something which is totally different in its scope and its ambition, but the same sensitive handling of paint, the same yeah. sort of lavishing attention on light. Lovely sense of form in both of them, actually, the way in which she's used the architecture of the support for the cable car. There's that beautiful sort of upward thrust. Sheila's choice of view today, of course, it was drained of colour, and yet she's found ways of bringing in just enough to make it sing. Mm -hmm. When somebody said, you've had your first hour, and I'd literally just put my brush on the board, it was a bit alarming. I didn't regret having made the choice of that view. I just hope I did it justice. Ophelia's work is just sensational. Her commission, I mean, the atmosphere on it. When I was working on the commission, I was seriously lost in it. And in that sense, out of all the pieces that we've done so far, that was the one that I was happiest with. It's incredibly complex structure. The rocks and the foreground, how they lead you in, and different greens that she's finding for all the foliage. And the light on that pagoda, the way it reflects, is just extraordinary. I mean, one of the things that bothers me sometimes about Ophelia's work is how close it sits to illustration. Yeah. But what you see in this commission, it's very firmly in the painterly camp. Mm. Yeah. And it is such an interesting story, isn't yeah. it? What, you've, you've been out partying all night with your lantern, <laughs> your monkeys watching over you. I mean, that's just That's exactly what the story is. But that's completely <laughs> absurd. Like, why are my interests in that? I just cannot get over this light. It's got an almost sort of spiritual quality to it. I think Ophelia's painting today lives off the way the light is shining on the dome. And I see echoes of the way the light is playing on the surface there in the pagoda roof. The seagull was maybe not necessary. I don't know. If we are going to accept her as a sort of surreal, magic realist artist, mm. why is the seagull any more wrong than a <laughs> monkey holding an umbrella? <laughs> maybe You're right. It's part of the playfulness. Yeah, that is exactly right. You know, there's a sort of passionate universe that she conjures up, but she paints them in quite a cool way. It's sort of a fascinating process. I found the final experience really, really, really challenging. The view is so enormous, it comes right at you. And it's how on earth you actually get that onto canvas, which for me was very tricky. And then we've got Claire, who, you know, for someone who I was worried could only give us up close, it all opens up so mm. beautifully. I am really pleased with my commission painting. I love the way the metal railings take your eye through. I've just got this tremendous breathing quality, but still with the signature Claire barrier. <laughs> and then it kind of leads you to very beautiful nowhere. And you don't realise how good that water is until you really look what it's doing. And it's just paint. It's just pure abstraction, beautiful <laughs> abstraction <laughs> that gives a sense of place, surface, light. I mean, it's, it's absolutely magical. The movement is phenomenal yeah. in that mm. water. Just inspired. Today's painting, the way she's placed blocks of colour to lead your eye through, and you realise Claire is a consummate colourist. Up until that walkway, I'm completely sold. It's just probably, for me, the architectural skyline doesn't have the same majesty as the rest of the painting. It's um, a bit like being a pinball in a pinball machine, yeah, isn't it? You sort yeah. of bounce up and down. Mm. And I love that diagonal that she's got with the wall, which is then counteracted by the chains and then with the bridge. A really dynamic, strong yeah. landscape. I am pleased with the painting I've produced today. I mean, it was crazily ambitious, but I think I got away with it. I hope the judges think so too. They're three such completely different and brilliant artists. I don't even know how to round this up. For me, it's got to be about who am I most excited 
to see another work yeah. from because all three of these artists are good enough to win. Judges, you have as hard a task today as you have ever had. How are you going to distinguish? Well, what we have to do is say, who can we not let go of? That's got to be the artist that gives us the most excitement, the most sense of possibility. What's really original? Yeah, and, and, and sort of projecting a bit, we know what the final prize is going to be and what that landscape looks like. And whose version do I want to see? Well, are you near making a decision? <laughs> I feel we're getting closer. Closer? Closer. Closer is not, not enough? good enough. We're we need there. an answer. We're nearly there. We have three cracking artists, but there can be only one. Sheila, Ophelia, Claire, thank you all for being such sensational finalists. It's been a real pleasure travelling with you and seeing your creativity grow throughout the process. But this is the moment we look forward to and dread in equal measure as only one of you can be crowned this year's winner. And the judges have decided. This year's Landscape Artist of the Year is... Ophelia Redpath. It feels amazing to be called the Landscape Artist of the Year. I'm really, really thrilled. When I started painting, I, I wasn't ever a landscape painter, but it kind of crept up on me, and it's so lovely to be thought of in that way. I will have a cup of tea with my daughter. It's going to be really just very, very nice to chill out. You did such a beautiful job, Claire. Your position was sensational. That water. It's been a marvellous experience, and sharing that passion, the actual joy in painting, the process of painting. That's seen lovely. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Obviously, it's a bit disappointing, but Ophelia's work's stunning. She really deserves to win. I'm thrilled for her. The whole competition has been the most tremendous uh, confidence boost. It's lovely having you. A bit of outside acknowledgement that what you're doing is not a complete waste of time. <laughs> Marvellous, yeah. Oh, it has been. is our winner because she intrigues us. You know, she paints in this way that feels entirely her own, but also a bit peculiar and, and really accomplished and peculiar. That's a kind of winning combination. And I'm just fascinated by this sort of fantastical code that she gives us, and I just want to be transported into this weird and wonderful world. I think Ophelia creates these other world, these surreal stories, but I always get the feeling that the message, it seems whimsical, but the more time you spend with Ophelia's paintings, something important is coming across. I can't quite imagine what Ophelia is going to do when she arrives in Wales, but I think there's obviously magic in Snowdonia, and if anyone's going to find it and draw it out and make it distinctly their own, it's Ophelia. Mm. Absolutely amazing. It's like something on a different planet. I've got my work cut out for me. I've always felt very, very comfortable knowing that there's a thriving natural world around. And so that's what I'm wanting to capture. I'm going to put everything that I can into it. Here we go. 